Good morning, brothers and sisters in the Lord, including our online worshipers. Welcome to the Ebenezer Community Alliance Church worship for today. May I request everyone to greet your seatmate and say, I am glad that you are here today and that God is good all the time. First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18 says, Rejoice in the Lord always and pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. I know we have a lot of experiences and circumstances for the past week. Let us set aside all those and fix our eyes to Jesus to worship Him all alone today. Let us express our rejoicing and our thanksgiving as we sing, Rejoice, the Lord is King, O worship the King, and praise the Lord God Almighty. Requesting everyone to please rise as we join our hearts to worship Him by singing these hymns. The Lord is King, your Lord and King adore. Rejoice, give thanks and sing and triumph evermore. Lift up your heart, lift up your voice, rejoice again. Rejoice again, I sing, rejoice, rejoice in glorious hope, our Lord the just shall come, and take his servants up to the Rejoice again, I sing, rejoice. Oh, worship the King, all oh, glorious above, all oh, grateful is He, His power and His love, our shield and defender. The ancient of days, pavilion in splendor, and girded with praise. Tell of His might, and sing of His grace, whose robe is the light, whose color space, His chariots of Your mercies, how tender, how 
firm to the end, our Maker, Defender, Redeemer, and Friend. O measureless might, unchangeable love, whom angels delight to worship above, your ransom creation with glory ablaze in true adoration shall sing to your praise praise to the Lord Almighty sing. praise to the Lord the Almighty the King of creation oh my soul praise him for he is thy help and salvation oh ye who hear now to his temple draw near join me in that adoration So wondrously reigneth Shelters the under his wings Yes, so gently sustaineth Has thou not seen How all thy longings have been Granted in what he ordained Prosper thy work and defend thee. Surely his goodness and mercy here daily attend thee. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do if with his love he be. Merciful, our Redeemer. We worship you, Lord, today. We thank you for each and every one present. I pray, Lord, that you will speak to us. I pray for our messenger who will deliver your message, O oh God, and that uh, our hearts will be renewed, our minds will be set to worship you, O oh God, our God Almighty. We want to worship you, Lord. Not unto us, but unto thy name. Give glory in what we are doing. So we want to worship you. We want to lift you up, Lord, in our midst. And for those who are listening online, oh God, I pray for them that they will be also inspired. They will worship you. They will love you, Lord, because you really love us. have done everything for us. So, Lord, once more, we pray. We ask for your blessings to each and every one as we celebrate, O oh God, your goodness and mercy. All this we pray with thanksgiving and the marvelous name and the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Please all be seated.
Hello. Oh, okay. Oh my goodness, this high-tech things. Um, we didn't have this when I was born, so we'll have to make some adjustments. Um, good morning. And to all of our online listeners, also good morning. And I'd like to do uh, a little speaking in tongues. This worship service of ours is not just in Sambuanga City or the Philippines, it's Hanggang Abroad. As a matter of fact, um, one of the um, worshipers natin online abroad is Seni Laude. And as you know, Seni Laude is um, in the United States. And uh, the husband of Seni was uh, our former pastor, no? Right here in the Venezuela. And so I'll do a little speaking in tongues and we'll talk about that later. So uh, Seni is a uh, Chabacano and Bisdak. Yes? And the father of uh, Seni, uh, Reverend Naba, is from Iloko, Slovakia. He is an Ilocano. <laughs> and therefore, uh, to Seni and to all Cebuano speaking, may umbuntang sa inyong tanandiha na naminaw karoon sa atong worship service. Yes. And also uh, to uh, our Ilocano uh, kababayan na imbag nga where is Pastor Ramsel? Uh, yeah, na, na, na imbag nga aldawa po. Uh, good morning. That is in Ilocano. And of course, uh, buenos dias con ustedes. May umbuntang sa inyong tanan. Shall we pray and ask the Holy Spirit to uh, help us understand and also help us to respond to His Word. God, Holy Spirit, You are the teacher. God, Holy Spirit, anoint our minds so we will understand Your Word. Not my Word, but Your Word that You prepared for us today. God, Holy Spirit, anoint our hearts so that we will be responsive and obedient to your word so that we will be a blessing to others through the lessons that we learned from you. We pray in the name of our Savior and Lord. Jesus Messiah. Aman. Amen. Well, <clears throat> we're done with this very big event that we uh, observed last month. And uh, during the uh, campaign period, uh, some very significant issues were raised. Some of them very uh, controversial. But, um, and responses that I received from friends, from people, from, you know, Facebook, from TikTok, from whatever, etc. Um, and especially those who won in the election, their uh, response is, eh, Tama na yan, talking, talking about yan, mga ganun. Uh, pabayaan na lang natin yan. Tapos na yan eh, yung ating mga leaders eh. Uh, we already chose them. Oh, malaki pa ang kanilang mga boto. So, let's move on. Let's move on. Those issues, eh, disregard them, forget about them. Um... Personally, I don't feel comfortable with that kind of a reaction. I thought that maybe there would be a better reaction and instead of just moving on, why don't we move forward? 
instead of moving on. Meron bang diferensya? Sa akin pong personal opinion ay meron po. Sabagat yung moving on ay it's a careless and enthusiastic response to a very important activity. Yan, sige na, bayaan na lang yan. Tignan, lihok na ta. Move on na ta. Well, at to move on, if you go around circles, gamoving on man po ka. Pili ba? Galihok ka. But then, ang lihok ni mo, sige rin ka ground and round and round. However, when you say, let us move forward, murag, murag may diferensya sapagkat moving forward na ay direksyon. Meron pong siyang direction. There is a goal. There is a direction. There is a purpose for not just moving on, but you move forward towards a goal, towards a direction. I thought that maybe for the next six years, let us, I will suggest, move forward. George Santayana, a philosopher professor at Harvard University, is famous for this quotation which he made in 1905, almost 200 years ago. George Santayana said, those who don't remember the past are condemned to repeat it. He meant that people who do not learn from the mistakes of the past are going to make the same mistakes. Also, if our world is going to make progress, it has to remember what it learned from the past. Winston Churchill, in his speech at the House of Commons in 1948, in a sense, also said the same thing, and I quote, those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. I think a very classic example is something that we heard just very recently about this uh, student, you know, they were attending, they were part of a uh, television program. Ia pregunta kanila, a Question in history, who are those three pari nga naging martyr? And to, <laughs> ang tubag, <laughs> Majuha. Majuha. It is Gomborsa, Gomez, Burgos, and Zamora. Those three martyrs. That is our history. How come? That kine mga bata ng estudiante. They have not been taught about history. They have not learned about what happened in the past. Shouldn't we learn about what happened in the past so that equipped with that information we are able to plan our activity ahead? Something like that happened more than 4,000 years ago in a place known as Kadesh Barnea, which is the boundary of the Sinai Peninsula and, and um, Canaan. We'd like to look back at that event and I will suggest that looking back, we could move. Oh, thank you very much. We could. That's the title of what I'd like to share. And so, if you have your Bible, kindly open to Deuteronomy chapter four. And if you don't have your Bibles, as I suggested last time, let us take notes. Maybe you could think about and read about and meditate about this before you go to sleep tonight. And more important po is to teach it. More important to teach it to your children. Baka mamajuha sila. So, 
I read Deuteronomy chapter 4. We're looking at verses 1 to 14. And now, O Israel, give heed. Yes, give heed. Listen to the statutes and the ordinances which I teach you and do them that you may live and go in and take possession of the land which the Lord our God, which the Lord, the God of our fathers, gives you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did at Baal, Paor, Baal Peor, for the Lord God destroyed from among you all of the men who followed the Baal of Peor. But you held fast to the Lord your God and are therefore still alive this day. Behold, I have thought you statutes and ordinances as the Lord my God commanded me that you should do them in the land which you are entering to take possession of it. Keep them and do them. For that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the people who, when they hear of all of the statutes, they will surely say, this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near as the Lord our God to us whenever we call upon him? And what a great nation is there that his statutes and ordinances are so righteous as all of these laws which I have set before you this day. Only take him and keep your soul diligently lest you forget the things which your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life, make them known to your children and your children's children. How on the day that you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb, the Lord said to me, Gather the people to me, that I may let them hear my words, so that they may learn to fear me all the days that they live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And you came near and stood at the foot of the mountain, while the mountain burned with fire to the heart of heaven, wrapped in darkness, cloud, and gloom. And then the Lord spoke to you out of the midst of the heart and the fire. You heard the sound of his words, but you saw no form. There was only voice, and he declared, his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, that is, the Ten Commandments, and he wrote them on two tables of stone. And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you the statutes and ordinances that you may do them in the land which you're going over to possess. I thought a lot about this in the light of what we have gone through and will be going through. And uh, do we have a similar situation? What is this? The people of Israel are going to enter into that land. They are now encamped in this place known as Kadesh Barnea. Uh, not yet, not, not yet, later, I'll, I'll call for that. Yes, thank you very much. Anyway, we'll, we'll explain that. Um, Canaan is on site. They could see the mountains of Canaan, but they failed to enter. Why? We'd like to ask those questions of this text. And unless we see the background, of what was happening here, and so we will subject this text into a diagnostic question, you know, the five W's? Do you know the five W's? 
what, where, when, why, who? What are these people doing here? Why are they there? And why is Moses teaching them three times in this text? Moses says, teach this. What is it that he's teaching? These statutes, this or what about these statutes and these ordinances? What are they? A very important instruction, those statutes and these ordinances that I taught you, wag nyung tanggalan at wag nyung dagdagan. Do not revise it. No revision. Take it as is as I thought you. What about this land? Why should I go to that land? Because in that land, the people, when you enter and when you do and live according to the statutes and ordinances that God thought you and I teach you in Sinai, those people around in that land will look at you and say, Wow, what great nation this is. This is a great nation. Look at their God. Hindi uh, lang kailangan pang gumawa ng malaking appointment. They could go direct to Him. Look at their laws, their ordinances. Ang kaling. What would be the reaction of these people in the land when they see these Israelites living there? Wouldn't they be attracted to their God? Do we have a practical application of this today? How many, ask ko lang, how many, uh, please raise your hands, how many seminary students are here? None? Yeah, there, we have one. But we have many parents Your most important students are your children. The next generation. So do we have a practical application to this? What has this got to do with my life today? To answer that question, it is again following the suggestion of Santayana and Churchill. Let us look at the past. Let's see what happened there at the past. And more than just having head knowledge about what happened in the past, let us learn from what happened there, particularly the mistakes that was made, so that as we move forward towards the future, we will be guided by what we learn from the past at hindi tayo maging palpakin in the future as we move forward. Deuteronomy is on the last, last of the five books of the Bible. They are known as the Pentateuch. The Jews, they call them the Torah. Deuteronomy, uh, it's a combination of two Greek words, deutero, meaning do, do, dos, mono, uno, do, and nomos, nomos is law, the law, the ordinances. In other words, a repetition of the law. That is the meaning of the word Deuteronomy. Why is there a repetition of the law? Let's move a little more forward or backward to Genesis. Let's look at the big picture of Genesis. Then we go to Exodus, the big picture 
of Exodus. Let's move on to Leviticus, the big picture, then to Numbers, and then finally to Deuteronomy, and having a working understanding of these events that were written down by Moses, maybe we could have a better understanding of what he's saying here, and then I pray that we will be better equipped as we move forward. What's the big picture in Genesis? The big picture in Genesis is God created everything perfect. Walang COVID loon. Ginawa niya. Tsaka yung Ukraine, pati yung Russia, hindi nag-away-away, kaya hindi po tataas ang gasolina. In today's news, no? tataas lang nun, 6 pesos. Ang diesel, hala. At saka yung bro, yung ating bread, no? yung wheat, mahal. Kyan. Wala yun noon. They will just grow. The food will grow. Peace, nice place, etc. Pero yung dalawang tao na yan, Adam and Eve at uh, Uh, Adam and Eve, sabi niya, oy, dong, ha? Yan, ganun yan. Uh, ikaw, manager ka nito, ha? Sa akin yan, and Eden is mine. You are just a manager. No? You do it very well, ha? Sabi nung dalawa, yes, sir. Ano po. Pero, ako ang boss, therefore you obey me, ha? Now, sa lahat ng mga bagay dito, isang bagay ang gusto kong huwag niyong pakialaman yung kahoy na yan. Yan, ito. Yan, yan, kahoy na yan, yan, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Everything here is available to you, but don't touch the tree. Because if you do, patay kang bataa ka. There's nothing wrong with the tree. It's not apple. I understand it is mango. Ah, uh, Whatever. The important thing is obey what I instructed you. That is the issue. You disobey, you're dead. And I'll kick you out of this land. Yes, sir. They disobeyed, they died. Look, tama ba? Minsan nag seminar kami, mga doktor nang nag attend. Tinanong ko sa kanila, natural ba na ang tao mamatay? O oh, siyempre, mayroon bang tao na hindi mamatay? Pero, okay, I will rephrase. Originally, ito ba ang tao mamatay? Ang tao Sabi nung isa, Bright, ay oo, no? Kung hindi nag-disobey yung lolo at lola natin, no death. Dying is abnormal as originally. So what is God going to do? What God does, we always say, love God. How, how loving is God? I hope that that's not just a thing that exists in the head. But to love God is to obey Him. Why shouldn't you? Every instruction he gives us is for our own good, not for his own good. So what did God do in order to fix this situation? This is what he does. He calls this boy, Abraham. Oi, Abe, you come here. Sir, Abraham, come here. I promise you Still in Genesis. I commit myself. I make a covenant with you. I will bring you to a land flowing with milk and honey. I am going to bless you with a son. And your son is going to have hundreds of offspring, you look at the stars. Ganun kadami ang maging anak ng anak mo, Abraham. Ang kamot pa ng ulo ng tao. 
And in the land, this nation that will come from your son will be a blessing to the people in the land where I will bring you. He sabi ng Abraham, Lord, yung misis ko eh, menopause na yan, Lord. Matanda na, hindi na pwede mga anak. At saka ako, Lord, senior citizen na ako, Lord, pwede pa ba yan? But God said, I will do this. I commit. I make a covenant with you. Could we have a picture there? The first picture, please. That is the Abrahamic covenant. God appears to Abraham in a flaming torch and a smoking fire pot. And he makes this covenant, I give you the land, I will give you an offspring, and your offspring will become a nation that will be a blessing to the nations in the land where I will bring you. I commit this. So, bisdak pa, mor pagyod, cross my heart. Okay, Lord, Abraham believed. Right. The story of Genesis, when it came to a point where the son Isaac, Isaac would have Jacob, Jacob would have 12 sons, the beginning of the 12 tribes of Israel, and their family, they move out of their land and they migrate to Egypt. And these 12 boys and their family, I don't know how many they were, probably less than a thousand. After 400 years, at the time of the Exodus, three million Israelites would get out of Egypt. They were rescued by God in the Exodus. We are now coming to the second book. Tapos na tayo sa Genesis. We're looking at the background. Exodus, they move out miraculously. And could we have the second picture, please? There. That's a picture. Oh. Canaan is there. That's Canaan. That's the Sea of Galilee. That is the Jordan River. This is where Canaan is. Egypt is there. That is good. Very good. That is Goshen. That is where the people of Israel lay, stayed. Beautiful land. Exodus, they cross the Nile River. Move up a little piece. Up there. They cross the Nile River and then they move down to Sinai. That's the Sinai Peninsula. And God appears to them in the mountain, give them the Ten Commandments. We're still looking at Exodus. And then we move to Leviticus. Leviticus is additional laws and statutes are given to them in this area, why? Because when they were in Egypt, they were just slaves. Wala silang kwentang mga tao doon. Sila ay tagahugas lang ng plato. Bagay, wala namang problema ang hugas ng plato. Sila ay tagamap, sila ay tagalinis ng CR, etc., etc. You, you know that. Many of our compatriots staying abroad. They experienced that. They were nothing. They were lang kwentang mga tao yan. But God made a promise with Abraham. You are my people. Akin kayo. You are chosen for a mission. Now, that Isaac, then Jacob, 12 sons, and then after 400 years, 3 million, time for you to move out 
because I'm now going to bring you to the land. Pero kailangan maintindihan ninyo kung ano kayong klaseng tao. Sapagkat nung landon kayo sa Egypt, wala kayong kwenta. But now, I am going to give you a specific identity that will identify you with me. This is the kind of people you are. The Ten Commandments. That's the way you should live. Then Leviticus. Other kinds of laws and ordinances that will give you a specific identity as people of God. That's Leviticus. They are being prepared for a settled life in Canaan. And in Canaan, I want you to live this way according to the Ten Commandments and according to the laws and ordinances of Leviticus. That will give you an identity. All right. They stay there for probably a year. Then time to move out. We come now to numbers. Uh, uh, could we get back to the, uh, to the, uh, the, the map again? There. Okay. Move out na tayo dito. Anong, anong sabi ninyo yung mga tao gathered around the mountain? Sabi nila, yes sir. Okay sir, talagang okay yan. Okay, let's move out. Time to move out. So they move out now. This is numbers. This is the route that they take. Sinai. Why numbers? Ano po nangyari dyan sa numbers? Numbers po ay kumuha ng census. They took the census. O ilang kayo dyan? Kumuha kayo ng census numbers. At saka lahat ng mga 20 years old and above. Ilan kayo? Etc. Etc. Aba! All of the male, 20 years old and above, 600,000 sila. 600,000 plus, etc. Hindi pa po binilang yung kanilang misis at saka kanilang mga anak at saka ang kanilang father at saka mother at saka lolo, lolo. So, very conservatively, you'd have about 2 to 3 million people here who would be moving out now of Sinai towards Canaan. That is the book of Numbers. Could we have the smaller picture, please? The smaller picture. Malakaya. Uh, so, ang rota nila po, again, Exodus, yan, pumunta sila dito. Exodus and Leviticus, ngayon moving out, Numbers, Tapos, they travel here and stop there. Ang travel time po, according to scholars, from Egypt down to Sinai, up to this area here, nandyan po ang Kanaan, it took only two years. Two years lang po yung kanilang biyahe. But something happened that changed drastically the mission of Israel. What is this? Pagdating po nila dito sa Kadesh Barnea, nandyan po ang Kanaan, boundary na lang yan. E sabi po ng mga tao dito, lalo ng kanilang leaders, Moses, po pwede bang i-explore muna natin yun? Punta muna natin, tignan natin yung lugar na yun. O sabi ni Moses, o sige, kung gusto niyo tingnan yan, di pumili kayo ng leader ninyo. So, one leader for each tribe, there were 12 leaders, remember, 12 tribes of Israel, one leader for each tribe, etc. Pumunta sila doon sa kanaan, oh, bong ganda, talagang flowing with milk and honey. Meron pa silang dalang grapes, no? Huh? At saka ang paglala nila ng grapes, hindi yung grapes na binibili nyo doon sa grocery na supot lang. Ito ay linagay po sa talagang milk and honey, ganda, 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 ganda. Pero, but, yung mga tao doon, malalaking mga tao doon. At saka yung mga cities, very well fortified. Hindi tayo pwedeng pumasok doon, hindi natin pwedeng kunin yun, hindi natin kayang kunin yun. Yun po ang report ng sampo. 
Eh, yung dalawa po, Jacob and... Sino? Jacob and Joshua? Ano? Ha? Huh? Ah, uh, oh. Alright. Yan ba ito tayo? Joshua and Caleb, sabi ng dalawa, Ano? Pasok tayo, let's get in and take the land. Sabi ng isang po, hindi kaya. Bumalik na tayo ulit sa Egypt. Babalik ka sa Egypt. Maging uh, busabos ka na naman doon. Dito na itong lugar na natin. Pasok tayo. But nag-prevail ang sampo because majority vote of them. Talo ang dalawang boto. We have a situation, an instance here where the majority is not necessarily correct. So, sabi ni God, ayaw niyo pumasok? Sige. Diyan kayo sa Kadesh Barnea, diyan dyan ang kanaan, dali na lang magpasok diyan sa loob ng kanaan na yan. Lahat ng mga lumabas from Egypt na 20 years old and above at lahat na nagboto diyan sa opinion nitong sampo, mamamatay kayo diyan sa Kadesh Barnea, hindi kayo makakapasok. You die there. You want to stay here? <laughs> and God sent a plague. I, I don't know kung COVID yung pinadala ni God. No? God sent a plague. And the ten leaders and all of those who agreed with them died. There, in the wilderness. That's the background. So you see, you have people now in Kadesh Barnea. Canaan is just right there. God made a solution through Abraham, create a people that will enter into the land and reflect him in that land so that people stay in the land and surrounding nations in that land will see the God of Israel and they will be attracted to this God. They will serve as a magnet to this God. I own you, Pumaso. You will stay here in Kadesh Barnea and in the wilderness for another 38 years. Two years lang ang biyahe, dyan, papuntang Sinai, papunta na dyan. Eh, imbis na, mabot nila ng 38 years doon. Hindi sila nakapasok. Ang nakapasok po, finally, dito, ay yung mga lalaki na 19 years old and below. A new generation. Of course, yung Caleb and Joshua, pasok kayo. The minority vote. Pero, kayong dyan sa Kadesh Barnea, hindi kayo pwedeng pumasok doon lang basta-basta. Hindi kayo pwedeng mag-move on. Sige na, mag-move on na ta. Bahala na lang kung saan niya itabo, dihan na niya, et cetera, et cetera. Basta kita rin, move on na ta. No, God said, you could not just move on and enter that land. What are you going to do in the land? 
when the people see you, will they be attracted to your God? Who are you? That is the substance of our reading today. The new set of generation, 19 years old and below, who were born in the desert, have to be reviewed and have to be, they have to go again face to face ng classroom for 38 years upang sila po ituruan ulit kung sino sila. You are this kind of a people and therefore Moses would say the statutes and the ordinances that were thought to our Lolo, our Lola, our Papa, our Mama who got out of Egypt, who went down to Sinai, who understood and went to the class of the Beticos, etc., etc. Do you know that? And sabi ng mga bata doon na 19 years old, Oh, Sir Majuha. Na. Mayabag na. So for 38 years, they had to be retrained. They have to be the laws and the ordinances. These are the kind of people you are. You behave this way according to the Ten Commandments. These are the kind of people you are in Leviticus. This is the one. That is your identity so that when you go out and you go move forward to the Canaan, people in the land and those surrounding nations will see you and they will say, wow, what great nation this is. Ah, Mr. Israelite, pwede bang makilala yung Diyos mo? Could I be a part of your community. Why, why, why are you very quiet? Does this have any practical application to our situation today. One thousand nine hundred eighty-nine years ago, as I shared with ourselves last Easter Sunday, Jesus rose from the grave, the apostles inside the room, they were living an end, a hopeless end. And Jesus appeared and said, Peace be with you. Kayo naman, oh. Andito ako, buhay ako. There was a change of attitude from a hopeless end to an endless hope. Now, there's something else that happened. After Jesus on Easter Sunday appeared to the disciples, he continued to stay around for another 40 days. You could find that out in Acts chapter 1, verse 3. He stayed for another 40 days. And I propose that during these 40 days, he reviewed with the disciples again about what he thought them for the last three years where they were going with him around and around and around reviewed refreshed them this is what i told you about this is who i am and i have proven to you that i am who i say i am and now let us review what happened again 
And Jesus, I propose, did that in the 40 days that he was with the disciples. He did that just disappeared after appearing. He stayed with them for another 40 days. Similar to what Moses does to these people before they entered into the land for 38 years. They had to be reviewed. For you to be an effective salesman of the gospel, you have to know what the gospel is all about before you could enter into the land and tell people about you. Baka mamajuha kayo diyan sa loob. On the 40th day, Jesus goes to heaven. He ascends to heaven. Interestingly enough, the one who would lead the people of Israel in Kadesh Barnea into the land was Joshua. Joshua is an English translation of the Hebrew name Yeshua. And Yeshua translated into English is Jesus. He leads the people to Canaan, Joshua. Fifty days later, or ten days after the ascension, there are many Jews, Israelites in Jerusalem. Bakit po? Because 50 days after the Passover feast, the law in Leviticus says, you come to Jerusalem to celebrate the feast of first fruits. Bring your first fruits, the harvest. Give it as a thanksgiving to God. Do that in Jerusalem so that 50 days after Passover, daghan naman, just like Passover during the time of the crucifixion, Jesus, daghan kayong mga overseas na mga Israelites sa Jerusalem. Coming from different lands there, etc. Around, they were scattered by the Assyrians, exiled by the Babylonians, if there were any uh, from Sambuanga who is a Jew, he would go there to Jerusalem. And on that day, 50 days, when Jerusalem was filled with overseas Jews, the apostles, after going through the review with Jesus, after seeing him in the resurrection, they would boldly proclaim to those overseas Jews who were now in Jerusalem and speak to them in Hebrew, but they understood in their ears katong mga overseas na mga Jews they understood them even if they spoke in Hebrew or Aramaic if they came from Zamboanga Peter would say brethren in Hebrew this is Jesus the Messiah he was resurrected we are etc etc and then what is entering into the head of that Sambongenio who is a Jew SL si Jesus yung mata ko na ele pero kapag the tres dias they understood the Holy Spirit equipped them with the ability to speak in a language that is going to tell about the gospel. So, what is that today? I am very specific. What has this got to do 
to us today. June 5, 2022. What was it that happened in 1,989 years today, 50 days after Passover, today, the Feast of First Harvest was also known as Pentecost, from the word Penta, 50 days after Passover, they celebrated the Feast of First Harvest. The disciples announced the gospel. 3,000 responded to the announcement of the gospel. And those overseas Jews who came to Jerusalem became the first Christians. On Pentecost Day, today, 1,989 years ago, is the birthday of the church which we are celebrating today. Today is Pentecost. Sunday. Today is our birthday. Happy birthday. Today is the birthday of the church, Pentecost. We are the new Israel. The church is the new Israel whose mission orders are the same as the old Israel. The problem is that the old Israel I palpakin, but God made a covenant and a people now born out of the new Adam, the obedient Adam, Jesus. Ay tayo po. The church is the new Israel with the same mission assignment. A people who will not go to Canaan but to the whole world. That's the mission field. To tell them about the good news, and the good news is believe in Jesus the Messiah and you will have a passport to enter heaven, the new Eden. Let us look at our brethren, the first Christians. This is what they did. You have your Bibles again? Could you turn to Acts chapter 2? And we're looking particularly at verses 4 and 5. After Peter makes the announcement, 
and after the people responded to the announcement made by Peter, this is what the new set of Christians did. Verse 41 and 42 of chapter 2. And so those who received his word were baptized. And there were added that day about 3,000 souls. And look at this, brethren. Why are we here? Because this is what the first Christians did. 1,989 years ago. Then they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They had Bible study. These new Christians have to be reinitiated into their mission. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They had fellowship. Look at us. Are you here? Because it is Sunday and it is an obligation to you to be on Sunday here in church. That is moving on. Let us move forward. We are here for fellowship. And then there was the breaking of the bread. They ate together. In Middle Eastern culture, you don't eat with an enemy. You eat it with a friend. And today we are going to do break the bread in Holy Communion as a community, as a fellowship. And then they had prayers. Our brethren, this is what they did 1,989 years ago. We continue the mission order given by God to the old Israel. We are the new Israel. But we have to know why we are the new Israel so that we will know what to share and become a blessing to others. God, Holy Spirit, again, as we prayed earlier, anoint our minds. We will understand your mission for us to the whole world. Oh, not na lang whole world long. Sa aming mga anak na lang, to our children, to the next generation, to my apo. And if possible also, Lord God, Holy Spirit, help us to share this good news with our neighbors, with our office mates. God, Holy Spirit, anoint our hearts so we will be effective. Gospel announcers to the world. In Jesus' name, amen.
For lo, the sorrows of the skies move forward, move forward, all along the lines. Move forward, move forward, the light begins to shine. Move forward, each and everyone, the golden harvest is begun. Indeed, part of our journey is to continue to move forward despite the struggles, despite the trials, the temptations that we are facing. And so this time, as we celebrate the communion, shall we prepare our hearts and at the same time, the elements. As we have heard from the message, we, the church, is commissioned by God to be a testimony, a blessing to the world. And I hope as we do the communion service, we will remember that as we go out and share the gospel to the world, as we become a blessing to the people around us, may we remember that we are one body in Christ and that we are together as a family in this journey. May this remember that we are not alone. And, and may this remind us That despite the struggle, despite the challenges, we will come out victorious 
because of our Lord Jesus Christ, the head of the church. And so this time, may I request everyone to please stand up. And this time, I'd like you to, to pray and ask the Lord for forgiveness. Talk to Him right now. And ask Him to search your hearts. And then afterwards, after prayer, after praying, I will lead a prayer of thanksgiving. Shall we all pray? Father, we thank you for the blood and for the body that was shed on the cross. Thank you for giving your life so that we will be saved. Thank you for that love, that unselfish love. And Lord, we know that we don't deserve this. We are not worthy even, Lord God, to receive such gift. But because of your grace, you have given it anyway. And for that, we are grateful. We are thankful. And so this time, as we continue to remember that, May we respond in faith and may we respond in love as well. As we continue to love each other, as we continue to journey with one another, and as we continue, Lord God, to serve you together, to worship you and to honor you. Lord, you know our weaknesses. You know, our faults, our sins. Lord, we continue to confess them to you. We continue, Lord God, to repent from all these things. Because we want to declare, Lord God, that we will follow you no matter what the cost. And we want to testify to the world that we don't tolerate sin and that we don't allow it to put a hold of us. So Father, this time, may you strengthen this fellowship, this family, even those who are with us in our live stream. May we remember that we are not alone in this journey. And may we remember that our mission is to show that same love that you have shown to us, that you have given us. And may that start in our homes, in our workplaces, and wherever we are. Thank you, Father, for your body and for your blood, whom you've used, Lord, for us to be cleansed, for us to, for, for our sins to be paid for. Lord, bind us now together with that love and may you strengthen our relationship with one another and with you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
In Corinthians 11:23 to 26, it says here, 1 Corinthians, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we partake the bread? In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Shall we partake the element? Again, let me lead us in prayer. Lord, true enough, your grace is sufficient. May we remember this day. May we remember your working in each one of us through your Holy Spirit. And may we remember that we are a church and that you are the head of the church. Thank you again for this element, for this reminder, for this gift of salvation that we are all enjoying because of the sacrifice you've given us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may now take your seat. Good morning. Now it is our time to give back the blessings we have received from the Lord through our tithes and offering, as it is said in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 6 to 7, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver. May I request the ushers to gather the tithes and offering. Let us rise for the singing of the psalogy. visited.
Ayan. Happy birthday po ulit and um, happy anniversary to our celebrants. We would like to acknowledge you kung nandito man kayo sa mga magbe-birthday and sa mga magse-celebrate ng kanila anniversary. Can you please stand? Ayan. So <laughs> Also, we would like to welcome our visitors. You can stand to be recognized or you can raise your hands. Like to welcome Ben Ago Agosehor. Ayan. Si Precious Shimaya Agosehos. Welcome po. Si J. Sir Bless Agosihos, welcome. And then, uh, Meryl Postrero, welcome po. And then si Sir Ralph, welcome. And, and then si Dina Lee, si Sister Dina Lee. Ayan, welcome po sa ECAC. For our announcement, uh, immediately po after this service, we will have an emergency meeting. So I'd like to call on our CMT to go to the back of the church for our emergency meeting. Yan lamang po. And then uh, let's continue to always remember in our prayer time, our brothers and sisters who are suffering no, from sicknesses because we do believe in the power of prayer and as a church, it is only proper that we all depend on, on that. And so, continue to remember uh, Sister Isabella Brillantes, the mother of Doc Josh. Kindly pray for her. For Mom Portia, of course, I think um, nagpunta sila ngayon sa sa Manila, no, uh, for for the checkup. And then uh, let's also pray for Sister Mel. Continue to pray for her, for um, for Sir Nargil as well. Let's remember them in prayer. For Mom Olaer, for Mom Fronda, and then. Uh, for um, Sister Marilu Kwikwi and uh, Sister Leila. Um, para po sa kaalaman ng lahat, they are suffering. Uh, not all of them. Uh, most of them are suffering from cancer and from chronic diseases. And um, we praise and thank the Lord because, um, because of God's grace and because of God's miraculous healing power until now, uh, they are strong lumalaban pa rin and uh, everything is being provided for them so I hope that we will continue to journey with them in prayer so this time shall we all stand for our closing prayer and benediction let's pray Lord thank you indeed Despite the challenges, despite the trials that we are all facing, and despite the, the good life that we are experiencing with you, the bottom line of, of our existence here, despite all of that, is our relationship with you and our testimony to the world. The message, Lord God, that we are bringing to the people through our lives. That is the very reason, Lord, why we are here. And so with that, as what we have heard, Lord God, as the new church, the, the, the recipient of this covenant, I pray that until the end, 
we will remain faithful to that calling. We will remain true to that calling. And we cannot do this on our own. And so as we end this service, as we go out from this place and go back to our respective places, may we be empowered by your Holy Spirit. And may we always remember that we are one body and that you are with us. And Lord, we continue to remember our sick brethren. We pray, Lord, for your continuous healing touch to be upon them. We pray that you will continue to strengthen them, Lord God, and that you will continue to provide for their needs. I pray that you will continue to encourage them because in you, nothing is impossible, especially if it is your will, O God. So we ask, Lord, that uh, for our brothers and sisters who are suffering from these sicknesses, we ask, Lord, that they will continue to be encouraged and that they will continue to be comforted, Lord God, knowing that you are there in their journey. Praying as well for our frontliners, our doctors, our uh, men in uniform. I pray, Lord, uh, that you will continue to protect their families, that you will continue to shield them from this uh, viruses and we claim for your continuous protection to be upon each one as well so that as we serve you Lord as we continue to fellowship with one another we will not worry about that but we will continue Lord God to uh, to do freely and to enjoy freely the blessing the fellowship that you have given us and so this time may the love of God the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, but now and forever. Amen. God bless everyone.